If you've watched many of my videos, you'll know that I've been fairly critical on the way that some items I've purchased off eBay have been packaged, and that's caused a lot of damage to them in shipping. The main purpose of my channel is to try to help maintain historic and, and vintage equipment, uh, mostly computer equipment, uh, but other things as well, old uh, valve equipment, that sort of thing. And these items are becoming increasingly rare. And as they seem to get damaged every time they're shipped anywhere, the rate that they're disappearing is accelerating. And as I say, the main purpose of my channel is really to try to preserve these, uh, reproduce components for them so that they can be repaired if they are damaged, and try to keep the history of our scientific developments going. I also like to give a shout out when I come across things that are done well. It's, uh, it's only fair. And in this instance, this is uh, also an introduction to my latest restoration project. Um, I bought this item from a seller in Germany and he has made a, an excellent job of packaging it. Uh, it's good strong outer box, properly double boxed. This is the only way you can ship items without them being damaged. Uh, if you just wrap two layers of cardboard around them, that's not double boxing. Um, so he's done a very good job of this. He's made a real attempt to, to get this item to me intact. I don't know quite how um, intact it will be. Now, I know he hasn't been totally honest with the listing. He did say this had come out of a working environment, but uh, I know that not to be the case because even in the photographs you can see that some parts are missing from it so it can't have come from a working environment but with old equipment like this that's kind of to be expected they all turn up in various degrees of disassembly parts missing but the main thing is as long as you can get them in a reasonable state where they haven't been smashed into pieces by the couriers then you stand half a chance of getting them repaired and back into a functional state Okay, so I'll get this out of the box. It's a bit heavy, so uh, I'll just pull it aside. Okay, so that's the outer box removed. Let's get the inner box opened and have a look at the item. Let's see how well it survived. So, as you can see, he's made a good job of putting it inside an inner box. Okay, and there it is. For anyone who hasn't seen these before, it is a Facet N4000 paper tape punch with the optional reader. I can see it's got a bit of damage on it, but that was fairly inevitable. It's, it's a very heavy item, and however well packaged it was, it's bound to uh, have a bit of a, a rough ride over from Germany. But um, on balance, it looks to be in fairly good condition. As I said, there are parts missing of it, so I know that the, um, the uh, seller wasn't 100% honest, so it'll be interesting to see what's inside, if anything, and uh, what condition it's in. Okay, so here it is on the workbench. It's in reasonable condition. A bit more damage than I'd originally thought, but uh, nothing too serious on the outside. The plastic covers are obviously a bit uh, scuffed and uh, cracked in places. Um, this thing is really heavy. It's built like a, an absolute tank. Uh, there's a fed size dent on the back um, there's a big screw uh, bolt on there for some reason and it's uh, pushed its way into the metal work but hopefully it hasn't damaged anything inside so the first step is I'll get it stripped down have a look at the parts inside and then uh, that will give me an idea as to how much work there is to do on this okay so I've got it stripped down into its major components I haven't tried switching this on, um, as Dave would say, uh, don't switch it on, take it apart. Uh, I always do that when I buy um, old vintage equipment. Uh, the worst thing you can do is switch them on, it usually damages something, uh, especially if it's a, an electromechanical machine, usually something seized up and if you try switching it on it will either burn out motors or burn out the devices driving them. I've got it into its uh, component parts, it's in much better condition in internally than I expected. It's really clean. I don't think it's seen a great deal of use. Uh, some parts are very badly damaged as expected. Um, the uh, plastic parts are for some reason quite thin 
uh, whereas the internal metal castings and uh, components are, are like a tank, they're, they're absolutely huge. Uh, I assume when it came to making the plastic parts um, they had a an old crap moment when someone tried to pick this thing up and decided to keep the weight down by making the plastic thinner. Um, but it's not too bad, I can repair this. Uh, the chad box is missing. I don't know if any other parts are missing, I've never owned one of these before. Incidentally, if anyone does have one of these or has the service manual or any information on it, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, as I say, I've never owned one of these before, so I'm kind of learning as I go as to what each bit is and how it works. Um, I don't know if the main processor board works. It's a 6809 based system by the look of it. Um, so it has 6821 PIAs and hopefully it shouldn't be too much of a problem to sort it out if it's not working. But as I said, if you do have any uh, schematics or information on this, it would be greatly appreciated. So this unit has the optional tape reader. Um, this is really nicely put together. It's um, pretty much all metal construction. There's um, been no expense spared on this. It's really nice. Uh, even this part uh, that looks like plastic is uh, aluminium extrusion. Um, all very high quality. Uh, the motor is obviously um, uh, very high quality. Again, I don't know if it works or not, but uh, they do seem to be mostly off-the-shelf components. I'm not sure what sensors it uses, but um, we'll have a look at that in a later video. So again, top cover plastic is in much better condition than I expected. Even the foam on this is in good condition. The foam on a lot of it, as uh, you might expect, is just falling to pieces. The control board and the uh, punch itself I haven't really looked at yet. It's quite an unusual punch mechanism, it's a series of nine solenoids, uh, each directly driving a pin rather than the kind of escapement and capture punches you normally see. But what I intend to do now is to take this apart in stages, have a look at each uh, piece of it, and make sure everything's uh, free and uh, appears to be doing what it should, and then I'll start to reassemble it and, uh, and go from there, and then fault fine from that point onwards. I'll do a video on each part as I complete it, and hopefully we can get this up and running. As I said, if you do have any technical information on this, especially schematics, that would be extremely useful. I do have the user manual, and that has some technical information, but um, it's fairly sparse in terms of the schematics and that sort of thing. This is an N4000 facet punch, I believe it's uh, also a model number equivalent to 4046. Um, so if you have any information on that, it would be appreciated.